G'day and welcome to today's model workshop. Today I am showing you my Hasegawa 132nd Zero. Uh, I'll show you the box art here. So I built this about nine years ago I would say and at the time I loved it because it was my first attempt at salt chipping. You can see all through here. And I just loved it and it was a revelation to me. I look at it now and it's ridiculously heavy handed. And a lot of people like a Zero and a Japanese plane that's been really heavily weathered. And you know, look, I like it, but I wouldn't do it again the same if I was building it again today. Now I will point out the obvious before we move on. There's a big miss here. Um, we have one flap, we are missing the second one, and that broke off and I lost it. <laughs> so, I'm really sorry that I'm showcasing a model that is broken. But, I've looked everywhere for it, I lost it about four years ago, it's never turned up, it's just gone. But, I like to think that the rest of the model is kind of okay. So, if that annoys you, apologies in advance. Feel free to just turn off now, really. Um, you know, it's not getting better. <laughs> but, for those of you who persist, let's get going. So, yeah, um, I still like this plan. I'm kind of going through some, a lot of my older builds and showcasing them, just so you guys can see where I've been, where I've come from, and, you know, how I've progressed as a modeler. Um, I hope it's interesting to you. This was, yeah, like I said, one of my first attempts at really heavy salt weathering, uh, salt chip weathering and uh, basically painted it silver, splurged on some water, splurged on some salt flakes, painted it the green, and then once that was all dry, washed it in water and the salt flakes dissolve. Um, for many years, and I don't know what I did wrong, I think it was the type of salt I used, for many years this thing would kind of sweat, it would still, bits of salt obviously didn't come off, and on a hot day it would just sort of slightly sweat bits of salt, which was most disconcerting. But, other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, it's, again, like I said, wouldn't do it the same again, but at the time, I loved it. So, let's get into some nitty-gritty details. So, I hope you can see inside the cockpit. Um, there is a photo-etched seatbelt. And instrument panel, bit tricky, bit tricky to show, so I will just take a photo and show you now. Other up detailing I did, so the Hinamaru's, the insignia, I would, they're detail, decals, I would never do Hinamaru decals again. Um, I've done a video on doing them yourself and airbrushing them and masking them, and it's so easy. Never ever would I do them again. But I did make an effort to make them at least look chipped. You know, there's nothing worse than a completely chipped airplane and then the decals are perfect, the insignia are perfect. That to me is, is pretty fakey. Um, what else have we got that's comment worthy? Yeah, look, the. the gun fire, uh, the uh, gun port exhaust stains are perhaps a bit heavy handed. Not such a fan of those now. I did deliberately leave the canopy so it could come loose. And there's one other thing that I left loose which I'll show you in just a second. But let's check out the underneath first. So the underneath, I tried to put a bit of extra detail in the wheel wells, you can hear something's loose, I'm not sure what. Um, but they're not amazing. And I did add brake lines to the landing gear. Which I was happy with at the time. Some pretty bad <laughs> sanding there. Pretty bad filling of some pretty big gaps. And while we're on the subject, yes, let's let's talk about seams because there are some biggies on this right here at the front I'm hoping you can get this 
is that great big fuselage seam in front of the cockpit. It's pretty brutal. And it continues behind the cockpit, so not my finest hour. That was my daughter yelling at me in the background. Um, yeah, the, the seams are not my finest hour, I will be the first to say. But the cool thing that I had mentioned is this. Let's zoom out a little bit and let's put our camera down. So I tried to deliberately leave this a little bit adjustable, let's put it that way. Oh, the whole engine's moving around as I do this. But you can take this engine cowling off to get a closer look at the engine, which I like. There are some details that don't bear looking at too closely. But, I added some wiring at the front there, and I also used real rust for the exhaust pipes. So you can see some of those don't actually meet the manifolds, but let's not talk about that. Yeah, and I'm happy with the exhaust pipe rust colour. For a hard-used warbird, I think that looks pretty good. So to me it's nice. I mean it's it's nothing like a Tamiya 132nd engine, you know. The level of detail just isn't that amazing compared to that. Compared to, you know, the market leaders. But for a Hasegawa kit that's been around for 20, 30 years, it's pretty good. Pretty happy. <laughs> I keep saying that. The reason I'm showing you this is I still like this model. So there's some real Massive, massive problems with it. Mostly in focus at the moment. Yeah, there's some real massive problems with it. But what I love about it is that it was really fun. Yeah, it was really fun, and it was a bit of an experiment, and I've still got a real soft spot for it. I'll show you the bottom of the undercarriage again, a bit more completely. Yeah, it's just one of those models that I still love to this day, even though it's got really big shortcomings. And so I thought, yeah, since I've got it on the shelf, and a couple of you guys have asked me for details about what's in my collection, um, really quick, I hope this isn't too chaotic for you. you know, there's a whole lot of planes up there. There's a whole lot of 132nd planes up there. There's more elsewhere. And I just thought it would be a nice opportunity to show you guys one of my planes and um, go into a bit of detail about why I liked it. So the kit went together really well, as I remember. Um, I'm afraid I don't remember any details about it. It, it is a while back. But, um, yeah, as you can see, my modelling skills weren't quite up to fixing seams, so that perhaps might be an issue for other people as well. Because, you know, I'm not the best modeler in the world, and when it comes to seams, I'm quite impatient, really impatient. <laughs> I just, you know, sanding and filling and sanding and filling and sanding and filling just does my head in. So that is my zero. Let's put it back together. Get it back into a slightly more realizable and recognizable shape. Yeah, she has some flaws, but gee, it was fun to build, and I like having it. Um, I do have a Tamiya Zero in my to build pile, and I plan to build that one, one of the navy grey colors, the Japanese navy grey, rather than this green color. Um, probably something from Pearl Harbor, I'm thinking, for that one. And it'll be nice to have the two when I get around to that. Oh, before I go, one more thing. Um, if you haven't already, do consider becoming a member of the Mod Squad. They're my supporters on Patreon. Um, for three bucks a month, you get 10% off at a range of hobby retailers. So, you know, it's not just me asking you for money. It's a two-way street. I like to give back as well. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff that members get that non-members don't. Um, just 
today I've released a video exclusively for Mod Squad members where I take you on a bit of a tour of my workshop. So there is definitely exclusive stuff out there that you won't get if you're not a Mod Squad member. And that's just another way for me to say thanks to the guys who support me financially. It means that I can do things like buy a light box. It makes a difference to what I can produce for you guys. Um, yeah, okay. I hope this has been helpful and interesting, and if it hasn't, let me know, and if it has, let me know. Um, for the Mod Squad, check out my website. It's davesmodelworkshop.com. Do consider it. And, um, yeah, any thoughts, let me know below, but otherwise, I'll check you next time on Dave's Model Workshop. See ya.